So because of the nature of the show, uh, you are playing Takashi Kovacs' sleeve, mm -hmm. which basically means that you and Will are actually basically playing the same character. Yeah, I and just, Byron Mann as well. Yeah, um, how did you pre prepare for that, to basically play the same character in the same show, but as different actors? Well, I had the advantage of going first. <laughs> <laughs> so I already, I got to like sort of set Kovacs, um, I got to start it out, so they sort of had to come to me, and then I could tell them, like, okay, guys, do like this. Uh, no, they, I mean, they, they created their own version of Kovacs, but uh, we did talk a little bit, and then I, um, I showed them a couple of, like, the physical mannerisms that I had given Kovacs. So, you know, it was up to them if they wanted to use that to sort of create a common thread. Um, and also the show feels like it it has not necessarily influences but such a mixture of, of like Blade Runner and Black Mirror and, and all these like iconic sci-fi influences it, it's kind of like a sci-fi lover's dream Yay. did you feel that like when you were making it like was were you influenced by anything or was it you know you kept it all separate <sighs> I was having my life. I was getting my life doing the show. It's my, you know, as a as a sci-fi geek, I, this was a dream come true for me yeah. to be a part of the show, to be an action, a woman mm. that's an action mm -hmm. hero in this world. Mm -hmm. um, there's a real like one of the best things we don't really talk about is like this battle between good and evil, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, right and wrong, you know, in in this in this world was an exciting exciting battle for me. Yeah. I think it was for me. It was it's the whole what if, you know, contemplating that in a science fiction world and, the, and, the, and within that genre. What if you could live forever? What would that do to you? How would that affect you? How would that? What are the pros? What are the cons? You know, what do you come up with after you sit staring out the window? I did a lot of staring out the window as my research for this job. Three hundred and fifty years. Yeah, <laughs> I had to think about that. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, how do you even go about playing a character that's lived for that long? Like, well, I think that's one of the things you think about. One of the things he, I think he probably is very good at is reading people. I think he's a master at reading. You know, of the way that somebody sits, the way somebody holds their hands, the way somebody nods their head. What does that tell you? So he's very good at manipulating people, mm. and we see that very early on in the very first scene that he has with Joel. I think he uh, he's very aware that Joel could uh, Joel's character could just leave at any mm. moment, but he really needs him. Mm. So how does he manipulate him mm. to stay mm. and work for him? Mm. And do you think there's scope uh, in the future of the show, if if we get another season, for your characters to be played by different actors? Yeah. Like, and do you think the audience is how will they react to that? Well, I, I think it's interesting, you know. I think that's something new. It's something we haven't really seen before. I guess or that Doctor Who is played by different actors, right? Mm. I haven't seen it, but um, yeah. so it would be something similar to that. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's very cool. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Completely. Absolutely. And how yeah, do you think the audience... It is a producer's wet dream. <laughs> <laughs> because they can have anybody next season. They don't need us. We actually have to behave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They can just go, no, actually, we don't like them anymore. Mm -hmm. we, we've had enough. Yeah. Take their stack. Put it in someone else. Or they can say... I'm playing her next season. Yes. They could say they she could say no, yeah. <laughs> they could say James Purefoy was so good, even though this story is solved. Yeah, he should be killed. I could be. I could remain. I could be in the show, but as somebody else. Yeah. yeah. And how do you think oh, the that, audience would react I, to that? I think they would I'd love it. Like it or lump it, wouldn't they? <laughs> Depends how much they like the show. <laughs> and would you yourselves, have you thought about whether you would be re-sleeved if, if we had that ability? We have thought about that. We've been asked about it a lot. It's oh, not okay. something that I thought about a great deal when we were making it, but, yeah. uh, but as we've been doing press, mm. you, clearly it's obsessing you guys. <laughs> and um, so we, uh, we have been thinking about it a lot. And I, yeah, I'm not convinced by the whole immortality thing, I think. Uh, I think that, that, that way a lot of problems lie. Mm, mm. I believe that we do not need to be received to have some existence beyond this plane. So I'm pretty confident staying with just believing that there's something ahead that is not to be missed. Mm -hmm. right. Have you thought about whether you would want to be sleeved yourself, like if we had that ability? Of course. Yeah, and? <laughs> um, well, it's one of those really tricky questions because I, I do sort of agree with the show's what the show says that if we give up our mortality, then 
probably lose our humanity, that mm -hmm. it, our humanity very much is tied to the fact that we will die. Mm. So it probably wouldn't be good for society as a whole. But if you gave me as an individual the opportunity to continue to live, like I would take it, you know? Yeah. It's very hard to turn that down. Mm. Yeah. Um, and the show actually feels like it, it's kind of like a sci-fi lover's dream. It feels very Blade Runner, like there's like elements of Black Mirror even, yes. and yet it's its own thing as well. Did you feel that like working on it? Yes, I mean, I'm a like a, I'm sci-fi nerd. I love sci-fi, and um, no, it, w it was a dream come true to, to get to be in this because I I really felt like while we were doing while we were doing it out that I, I would love to watch this show myself. Mm -hmm. And that's a good feeling when you're in something that you know you're going to like to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously, um, because you play the same character as well, um, and that character is of Asian descent originally, are you concerned at all about a conversation around whitewashing or...? No, uh, I mean, I think that is a really important issue and, and that's something that's been prevalent that, you know, can't continue. And whitewashing is when you have a... Asian character that then you cast a Caucasian person to play that character, mm -hmm. but here it, it's you know it's very different. It's a it's an Asian character that gets put into a Caucasian body against his will mm -hmm. and is trapped in that body, and mm -hmm. that's part of the story. Mm -hmm. um, so that's two very different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and Rennie, for your character specifically, you obviously had a lot of scenes with Joel Kinnaman, but also William, mm -hmm. and but they're playing the same character. Mm -hmm. So what? how did you develop like a connection with both of them? Did you just treat them like one person on set? or <laughs> like? <laughs> that's the wonderful thing about chemistry and the ability to um, for really good actors, I, I just really feel both Will and Joel were so well cast because they, it's just kind of so easy to love them both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it's, it's, it was a really a joy to be able to work with both of them and that, that's the beauty of it is that love can be real with different people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like because what is constant is, is the, the truth. Yeah. Of, of what it means to you know really love someone. And just a fun little question, if you could be sleeved into anyone in the world right now, who would it be and why? I'm gonna stick to my answer and okay. go with LeBron James. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you really wanna be LeBron James? Yeah, I mean, 30,000 points, you know? Yeah. It's, it's pretty impressive. Cool. Um, and obviously, like you started training as well for Suicide Squad 2. I was hoping you could tell your fans a bit about what they can maybe expect from the sequel. I don't know yet. I haven't. I haven't read the. I know they're working on a script, and but they haven't sent it to us yet. Okay. Mm. All right. Okay, <laughs> then. Uh, um, as much as I can tell you. <laughs> and oh, another fun question: Like, if you lived forever, what would you do with your time? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think I would dedicate myself to saving the oceans. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. yeah, no, that's great. It's a great <laughs> cause, yeah. Um, I think I'm done, actually. That's, that's everything I've got. So thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you.